Hello YouTube, WJ's Handy Dad here. Today I'm going to be converting the golf cart from the old fashioned incandescent bulbs to a complete street legal LED setup, complete with a horn, turn signals, LED headlights, and I may even throw in that battery indicator as well. That doesn't come with this set. That's something extra I bought. But I figure while I'm doing all this wiring, I may as well do it. So it's pretty cool. It comes with the turn signal that has the headlights right on there as well as the horn. But you know me, I'm most interested in having LED headlights. They're just so much brighter. And at my age, that really makes a big difference. My installation is going to be a little bit different than yours might be if you don't already have some sort of light system in. So mine is already pre-cut with the old light fixture, so all I'm going to have to do is remove mine and then just put the new LED fixtures in their place. If you don't have lights, then you're going to need to obviously cut holes. The kit comes with a template for you to put down on your golf cart, trace around the edges, and then what they suggest is drilling four holes in the corners and then using some sort of saw to cut it out. Um, I might choose a Dremel tool over a saw, but either way, cut it out, smooth down the edges with sandpaper or whatever. But I get to skip that step, although I have to remove the existing, so I guess mine may actually take longer than just cutting fresh holes in the panels. The next question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to leave this all assembled and just work as best you can, or do you want to take this piece off, which gives you a lot easier accessibility, although it does require you to go through all the steps of taking it off. I've removed my seat to make everything easier to get to in here. And then they recommend that you disconnect both battery cables, negative and positive. I usually just thread those back on just so they don't get lost. I'm going to go ahead and remove the roof, which is basically two 11 millimeter nuts on each side in the rear, and same thing in the front, and then that just lifts off. Alternatively, you can remove these bolts that are going into the back of the seat for the rear, and then these singular bolts in the front and then lift the whole thing with windshield and upright posts completely off instead of taking just the roof off. The removal of that front nose piece, there's three on each side. These are quarter inch bolts and they're held in with a nut that's in a track. So be careful when you remove all of these, they, the nut will slide down and fall out. So you want to be in an area where if it falls, you can find it easily. Then there's half inch nuts on the top. So like I said, you should have three of the smaller and one large on each side. And with those bolts out, this piece lifts off and you can see the sliding nuts that I'm talking about but don't lose those. <laughs> it's a Phillips screw in the front and it's a half inch nut in the back and it will turn so you need something to hold it secure in the back. With those removed that will just come off of there and you see it's just held in with these plastic retainers those disconnected this whole front nose piece will come off and you'll see mine because I have all the extra lighting and stuff already installed I've got to disconnect wires that you probably won't have on yours you see with the nose piece off it's so much easier to get to any kind of wiring or anything else that you need to work on 
for example this one had a horn it just never worked so I'll take that out and when I want to put in the uh, power meter it'll be a lot easier to do it being able to get in through here instead of having to fish my way up from the bottom these are the existing holes that were already there and you see these are very close but if you slip that on where it's supposed to be it's leaving an exposed gap so I've got a couple options one I could cut the bottom of this off and just push that in there flush or I can try to do something body wise behind there I think I'm going to opt to just put something behind there for now as opposed to cutting this and risking that not fitting right either since it's obviously molded to go right here on the bottom of this bumper piece but uh, anyway you won't have this gap because you'll have used the template that came with these and not had existing lights so yours will fit nicely and you'll have the four screw holes so I'll leave it up to you if you think which is better <laughs> the old one when you put the headlight in the mounting brackets attached in the back so you didn't see them whereas this style you have screws that are going to be visible but this is easier from a taking it off putting it back on standpoint because obviously you just unscrew and lift it out of there and have to take this piece off I removed my old horn and headlight wiring and the nice thing is the old bracket fits the new horn so I'm going to use it and so you just put that nut on there to connect it tighten it down in the position that you want it to face probably somewhere in this direction and since that doesn't have any kind of lock nut or anything I recommend you put some thread locker or some RTV something on the threads to keep that from coming loose because if that falls off when this is all reassembled it's gonna be really difficult to reach once you get it lined up where it's supposed to be take the included screws and screw those in I'm only able to do three screws because of my pre-existing lights. You will hopefully be able to do all four on yours. Installation of the turn signal mechanism is just placing it where you want it. You've got these metal clamps that go around. And there are Phillips screws they give you. And I recommend you don't put the cover on until you've sat in here and tested out if that's the right position for you. So this may end up moving, is what I'm saying. So I'm not gonna put the cover on and have to take that off later, but you can just loosen those screws a little bit and move this wherever you want it to go. And then you need to get these through to here. So you gotta probably cut some slits in the plastic there so that you can kind of move it out of the way to fit this through. And your switch here, you see the yellow is on the middle post and the silver is on the top or bottom post, whichever you want to call it. I'm gonna remove that switch. That's less to have to force through there. So you see it can be done. And you see I just cut some slits here so that would lift up and close back down. 
and again that would not have been easy to do had I not removed this top panel take your hazard switch that we've already removed the lock nut and the wires push it through whatever hole you're putting it in for me I'm putting it through where the old headlight switch was if uh, you don't have a hole then obviously you need to drill a hole and then thread on the lock nut and tighten it your switch won't go anywhere and then you're going to reconnect the wires and thankfully there's only one way that it can go probably want to push those back down because the rest of it is going to connect to your brakes and stuff so now up front you have your headlights and your horn go ahead and connect the horn I don't think it matters purple and black but I will double check it before <laughs> I put everything back together you can reconnect the brain yep. see that gap there and you'll have your brake wires will connect up through there and then the rest of the wiring here will pass up through there and the rear ones will head out to the tail lights You just want to pull them up through. Of course, they will get caught in everything, so you're going to have to go back and forth. It's a lot easier not holding the camera, but just basically fish them through. So you see put a 20 amp fuse there from the hot side. And I went overkill. I did a fuse on the negative. And I also did a switch there so I can shut it off in a hurry if I need to without pulling the uh, cable. Put the wire in the conduit. It goes down. That's the converter. The converter hooks up real simple. You put the wire from here goes to the hot and the wire from there goes to the ground and then there's two outputs a yellow and a black the yellow is the hot output and the black is the ground output push the tail lights up through there driver's side wind just you'll find it real easy over here passenger side wind i've ran a fish stick all the way across i'll just tape that there and then pull it through and pulled it through so untape that and then you just take that wire and push it out the back so there it is I'm assuming red is right it makes sense how the wires are cut that the red ones would be on the right side or passenger side of the vehicle because they're longer runs to them so you just want to connect them and unlike the headlights these look like these are the same size as the old ones so they just fit in there and then i'll just screw them in same thing with the driver's side and you see they've included lots of zip ties to zip tie that wire loom different places to keep it secure I'm gonna hold off doing that until I'm done make sure everything is reaching where it needs to reach and everything before I secure it all so you can see with it temporarily hooked up just to see you got hazard lights 
you got driver turn signal, passenger turn signal, and of course horn. I'm gonna mount this right here, so it's basically next to that light. It's about 35 millimeters and 25 millimeters, so I'm gonna do 35 by 25 cut here. And I wanna get it even with this edge, but it's gotta be a little bit lower because it can be down in this area, but it can't be right up on the top. There's the lines, and I've checked them a couple times. They appear to be correct. There's a couple ways you could do this. You could drill holes in the corners, obviously on the inner part, not on, don't do it outside of your lines, and then just cut with a you know, razor blade or something. Or if you've got a Dremel tool, you can try to cut straight lines with that. Since this is such soft plastic, you can just take the drill bit like that and just cut a big slash in it. And just take the knife and just try to cut along your lines. Take your time and work slowly. So with a lot of patience, get that cut out and see. That'll fit like that and then it screws in. So you see it works now. It's a little bit different than the pictures that they show when you buy it. It, it, it looks like it shows red, yellow, and green LEDs. and uh, It's just a single blue LED. Uh, so the wiring was actually pretty simple <laughs> it's a hot to the hot a ground to the ground and then your accessory power your keyed power goes to the one that was labeled C so doing that it works doing it the way it appeared in the really poorly written instructions it didn't work and then instead of screwing it in I just use some E6000 around the edges to stick it in there because I couldn't get the power screwdriver to get here to do that one. The other issue you deal with is you have unused wires that you're going to want to zip tie up and so you want to take all of that into consideration when you're uh, zip tying things in uh, Try to leave yourself enough room that you can disconnect and reconnect the headlights without too much effort. I can tell the red and blue are not used on this. Uh, it's kind of strange, but there doesn't seem to be any use for them. So I've got them zip tied off. And then I've pulled this up a little bit so there's a little more room to reach the lights now. It should make it easier to connect them and hold the bumper on and then this appears to be the brakes and again they say don't use the black wire just use those two so again I don't know why there's extra wires that seems kind of strange the things hooked up to test you get your headlights turn signals hazard lights. I would say we're ready to put the front bumper cover back on. As you can see I just put some Kydex in the corners of the lights for right now. The nice thing is to do any kind of body work on this I'm not going to have to disassemble everything. So I can put some fiberglass or Bondo on there at some point if I really want to make this look a little bit better 
but for now I can leave it like that and at least it's functional. Installation is reverse of removal. We'll start with the plastic tabs and then the bumper. Getting those back lined up, it's not easy by any means, but what I find is a little bit helpful is put a little silicone in the track, RTV or some E6000, and that keeps those nuts from sliding around so much. And then obviously once you torque them down, when that silicone dries, the nuts should hopefully stay in the right place. Next, I'm test fitting the brake pedal and you want them fully seated like that. And you can see they come on when you press the brake pedal. And use the included screws to secure your tail lights. It's four for each light. Using the six included small screws, you want to mount the brake pad about there on your brake pedal and you want to make sure when you do this that you don't stick it on there like that you want to make sure your cord is running behind so that you can attach it to the back side of the pedal there and it won't bind up on anything you just want to test and make sure they're working so break off break off the next step is going to be to go around and clean up all these wires so you're going to want to zip tie them places possibly add more conduit basically just clean it up so that they're not going to get caught on anything when you're driving Obviously like this, you wouldn't want this getting between here and rubbing on where that brake pedal meets the floorboard. Just things like that. There's not really a right or wrong. It's just finding the best places to attach to and protect those wires. So like I said, there's not really a right or wrong way to do it. You just want to make sure that your wires aren't gonna get tangled up in your steering or your tires or anything when you're driving. And uh, no, that's not just duct tape up there. I put some E6000 and you also wanna check in the back and make sure there's nothing hitting your back tires. how you power it you get one of these either 48 to 12 or 36 to 12 depending on what kind of golf cart you have you hook that up to your power and then you hook up your light system to the, the 12 volt output and I like to put a fuse on the hot coming in to these just in case and then obviously there's a fuse coming out of there on the input side of the headlight system. After sitting in it and testing it, I determined that it was best to have it all the way up. You see, you can still turn the steering wheel freely, but that puts this in the ideal location for driving. That does fit over, not completely, it just kind of snaps on the side. I went ahead and put a zip tie just because at the top, it wasn't wanting to stick on there. And then this cover just snaps on. There's only one way it can go. And there you go. Hope the video was helpful. Appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And please tell your friends about my channel. Thank you very much.